What's up guys, I'm Suman from Phone's team. I've always been passionate about building PCs, but I've still not built my own PC. But I'm sure there are many awesome people out there who want to build a PC, but are unsure about what parts to choose or whether to go with a manufacturer or pre-built PC. So in this new series, which I'm going to be calling as Mr. Steen Builds, I'll be recommending the parts that you need to build the perfect PC. This series is aimed at many price points, be it if you want a PC under 40,000, it'll be there, under 50,000, it'll be there. The parts here mentioned are based on the Indian pricings, but if you want the US pricings, it'll be in the description down below so that you can check that out. So in this series, let's build a 40,000 rupee gaming PC. This is going to be an Intel based PC with NVIDIA graphics and this is based on the new Skylake architecture. So without any further ado, let's begin. So for the processor, I'm going with the Intel i3-6100. This is a 6th generation processor from Intel and this is a dual core processor with 4 threads and since this is priced at a really competitive price it definitely offers value for the money and don't be fooled even though it has only 2 cores it is really powerful enough to help with your daily tasks. Gaming with this processor is not at all going to be a problem cause the clock speed of this boy here is around 3.2 GHz if I'm not wrong. So for the price, the Intel Core i3-6100 is definitely a must. For the motherboard, we are going with the Gigabyte GA-H110M S2. This motherboard, first of all, is priced at around only 6000 Indian rupees. For this price, you get DDR4 support. So there are two RAM slots which support DDR4 RAM. Any Skylake processor will be supported and even in the future, if you want to upgrade, there's no problem. You have a PCI 16x slot which is a Gen 3 slot. So the latest graphic cards, if you again have any idea of upgrading, will definitely be supported. You have SATA ports, you have plenty of USB 3.0 ports and this is definitely a good motherboard and a value for the price. For the RAM, we are going to go with the Kingston Hyper X Fury Black. This is a 8GB stick and since this is a single stick, you can definitely go for future upgrades and since this is clocked at around 2133 MHz it is definitely fast enough for your day to day tasks and it definitely has the advantage of being a DDR4 module and due to this it definitely consumes less power. Okay. For the graphic card, we are going to go with the NVIDIA 750 Ti. I know you may have a doubt, why not go with the 950? Number 1, it is priced 5000 rupees more than the 750 Ti. Number 2, it doesn't offer much when compared to the 750 Ti. Everything is exactly similar between the 750 Ti and the 950, except for minute changes maybe in the design or something like that. Taking into consideration the waste of money, I decided to stick with the 750 Ti. And the 750 Ti is no joke. It is a 2GB DDR5 graphic card with loads and loads of capabilities to play 1080p gaming at medium to high settings depending on the game. For the graphic card, we are going to go with the 750 Ti. For the hard disk, we are going to go with the Western Digital Caviar Blue. This is a 1TB hard disk and it has 7200 rpm this means you get really fast reads and writes when compared to the 5400s even though this is not going to be as fast as an ssd this will definitely provide you with loads of storage western digital hard disks are definitely known for their reliability and the caviar blue is no exception so for the storage we are going to go with the western digital caviar blue for the power supply, we are going to go with the Corsair VS550. This is a 550 watt power supply. I know this is a little killer for what we are building, 
But anyways, for future upgrades, like if you're going to upgrade to a newer graphic card or upgrade the RAM or upgrade the CPU, this is not a modular power supply, but for the money, it definitely provides great value. And Corsair have definitely made a good hold in making power supplies and this is again no exception and the VS550 is my choice for the power supply. For the case, we are going to go with the Cooler Master Elite. 344. This is a mid tower case. It has no side panel windows, but one advantage is that the front panel has USB 3.0. Now, that is definitely going to provide with greater transfer speeds. And Cooler Master definitely makes really good cases, and the LA354 has definitely a kind of modernistic design to that. With the blue accents over the black, the Elite 344 definitely looks really good, and for the price, again is a killer buy. Here is the 40,000 rupee PC build for you. If you like this series and my idea of making this build guide, definitely hit that like button and share this video. If you bros want any other uh, builds or build guides under certain price points or if you are particular about any brand like you want an Intel Nvidia build or a complete AMD build or say a really tight budget build, definitely let me know. I'll make sure that I do that as soon as possible. So, thank you for watching and make sure to hit that like button and support Phone Steel. So, thank you for watching. This is Suman signing off once again. Peace.